everyone. You are so welcome to our carol service here at Wilsford Baptist Church. And welcome to everyone who's joining us online. And if you're a guest, we're so glad that you're here. My name is Kelly, and I'm hosting with the Pastor Mark, or one of our pastors. Yeah, yeah. Um, everyone on your seats, you would have come in and seen some sweets. So we're going to do greet with a sweet. So what we'd like you to do is not necessarily turn to the person beside you. You can get up and go and greet someone and exchange sweets. And if you find someone who has a sweet that you want, you can go and maybe do a swap, little trade. <laughs> it's a nice welcome. <laughs> we just realized we haven't got any sweets here. Wow. Yeah, we'll go. We'll go. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, it's good. We've all had an opportunity to say welcome to each other, um, to greet you. Sorry for those at home. We haven't yet found a way of transmitting sweets um, through the internet. But um, it, also, if you are watching from home and you think, actually, we want to come along in person, we do have some carols later on at half six. So you can come here in person if that's what you want to do. But we are going to do a quick quiz, okay? And, um, and this is kind of something in, uh, there's something in this quiz that has something to do with the Bible story we'll be looking at a bit later on. But underneath six of these seats in here are stars, okay? So I want you to, can you reach under your seat and see if you have a star? And oh, check the seats next to you if they're mm -hmm. empty as well. Just give them a check, Okay. Has anybody got a star? Anybody found one at all? Oh, Ben's got one. Very good. Anybody else? Oh, yeah. Harriet. Excellent. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Sarah's got one there. Brilliant. Anybody else got a star? Ah, oh, Lena's got a star. Fab, if you've got a star, and um, can, you, can you come up here? And if you really don't want to come up, can you give it to somebody who looks like they're desperate to come up? Okay? But <laughs> Ben's passed that one on straight away. <laughs> okay. Let's see how we're doing. So we've got... We should have six. Okay. Come up here. Come up on stage. This is great. Anybody else? Or is everyone else... Oh, let's, yeah, let's give them a clap as they come. Fantastic. Good. Okay, we've got two on the red team. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just... Uh, yeah, Poppy, you're on the red team now. Can you come up as well? Actually, we need a blue. We need someone on the blue team as well. Lucy, come on, Lucy. You can do this. You can do this. And um, who else wants to come just on the blue team? We've got one more blue one. Um, oh, which one of you girls wants to do it? You can't both come. Which one? Forget so we get, so we let Becca come. Come on, Becca. Come on up. Okay, right. Up you come. And if you didn't get a star, you can get involved in the next one, so don't worry. There's, some, there's another opportunity coming up. Have we got three blues and three red stars now? You've got two. Oh, look at that. Wow. That's good. I'll leave you with one. Okay. Now, what I need you to do is I need somebody to hold one of these on teams. So come in the team. So we'll have a red team here. If you come and stand here. You are the red team. What's your? T what's um? Let's just get a microphone here. What's going to be your? What's going to be your team name? Poppy. Um, I don't know. <laughs> your team name? Cupcake. Cupcake. Team Cupcake. We like that. Okay. There you go. Perfect. And in blue team, what's going to be your team name? Santa Claus. Santa Claus. Team Santa Claus and Team Cupcake. Brilliant. I'm liking this. And um, and you're each going to need a pen as well. Okay, so there you go. You can have a, have a pen. You guys have a pen. And um, you cannot let the other team see your answers to this. So we're going to have 
Um, we're going to have some questions. And guys, if you're in the room, no help in them, okay? Um, but um, but but you can you guys here, you can cheer on uh, Team Santa Claus, the blue team. And you guys, you're supporting uh, Team Cupcake, the red team, okay? So those are your teams. So uh, let's actually let's hear it for Team Cupcake. Can we give them a cheer? Excellent. Good. Let's uh, let's hear it for Team Santa Claus. Yeah. Excellent. Good. Okay. So let's have let's have the first one of our questions. Uh, let's put it on the screen. Let's go full screen, and we can always just put it up there for a second. Okay. Here's your first question. No saying the answer. Is the sun a a star? B, an asteroid, or C, a planet. You have to write A, B, or C on your paddle as a team. So just confer, whisper to one another. What answer are you going to go for? Write it down. Okay. Okay, right. Can you turn them around and show everybody what you put? Okay. Oh, we've gone for A. We've gone for A. Okay, what do we think, everyone? Is this right? Yes, okay. It is. It's a star. Fantastic. You're going to need to wipe that clear. Right, excellent. We're going to go for the next answer. And actually, what we'll do is we'll give each of you a star for that. OK, so we'll keep track. So you've got one star each. OK, right, next, um, next question. How many Earths could fit in the sun? OK, so, um, so you have to guess. So, so the perspect the pi this picture doesn't help you because it makes the Earth look bigger than the sun. That's something called perspective. Um, the Earth is much smaller than the Sun. So the answer is, is it A, 103 Earths could fit into the Sun, B, 130,000 Earths could fit into the Sun, or C, 1.3 million Earths could fit into the Sun? Have, have a little guess. Write down what you think on your paddle. Everybody else at home or, uh, or out there, tell the person sitting next to you what you think it is. And let's see if you can get it right. OK. Brilliant. So let's, um, let's turn around the paddles and show everyone what you put. You both said C. Wow, 1.3 million. You think it's 1.3 million? 1.3. It is. It's 1.3 million. Fantastic. Give them a cheer. You get a star each again. Fantastic. Let's go. To, this is good. Two stars each at the moment. Let's go to the next question. Gets more tricky. How many stars are there in our galaxy? So we're in a galaxy called the Milky Way. There's a lot of stars in the Milky Way. But the question is, how many? So is it A, 100 million stars? Is it B, 100 billion stars? Or is it C, 100 trillion stars? Okay, so just have a think in your teams. Have a think in your teams. Which one do you think you're going to go for? See which one you want to go for there. Have you guys each written an answer? It's tricky, isn't it? OK. OK, let's, let's turn around the paddles and see what you put. What have you put? B. And what have you put? B. What do you think? You think C? They're right. It's B. It's B. It's 100 billion stars. You guys get a star. We don't have 100 billion of them for you, but you get one. OK, let's go with, let's go with one more question. There's two more questions, actually, to go. So how many galaxies... Okay, so the Milky Way is a galaxy with 100 billion stars. How many galaxies are there in the whole universe? So is there, look at this, we've got the galaxy on the ceiling here. Is there two, A, 200 billion galaxies, B, 2 trillion galaxies, or C, even more? Okay, so have a, have a little think, confer. If you're sitting there, think, tell your neighbour what you think it is as well. Um, have a think at home. What do you think it's going to be? Have you, have you written down an answer? Have you guys written down an answer? OK, can you turn around your answers to show everybody? You've each gone for C. You've gone for even more. Anybody here know the answers? Anyone like an astronomer, physicist? No? OK. Well, I'll tell you what. I, there's a little bit of a trick to this question. If we get the answers just up on screen one more time, because actually, um, a, a few years ago, they thought there was 200 billion. And then they, then they thought, oh, no, maybe there's 2 trillion. And then somebody else said, no, we think there's about 30 trillion or 50 trillion. So really, all of the answers are correct in one way, shape, or form. And the answer is we just don't know. It's, the universe is so big, 
Uh, they haven't really figured out the answer to this. So you're, you're both right. That's a good answer, even more. I can see why you did that as well. Because of the way it was phrased, it did look like that might be the one. So let's go to the next one. This is, I think this is the last one. So um, before, before something else. So which is more? This is tricky. There's only two options here. Which is more? The number of grains of sand on all of the Earth's beaches. Just imagine how many grains of sand there would be just in kind of if this place was filled with grains of sand and, or if all the beaches. So that, or the number of stars in the universe, which given what the answer you've just done, they're both going to be quite a lot, aren't they? Which do you think is going to be more? Again, what do you think is going to be more? Have a little think. Have you each written down an answer? Okay. Um, Katie, what do you think is more? Oh, is this on? Is this mic on? I think stars, because if the universe is infinite, therefore there are potentially infinite stars, Ooh, whereas grains of sand on the Earth is finite. You think so? Uh, I like that answer. What do you think, Alistair? Are oh, you going to agree with her now, aren't you? Irritating. <laughs> yes, I am. Sorry. Okay, that's interesting. What did you guys put? B. Put B. Okay, what did you put? B. You put B as well. Do you know what? Actually, this is an interesting one because some very clever mathematicians did some kind of, I don't know what they did. Some mo I'm going to say some modelling because that sounds intelligent, but I don't know, don't know exactly how they worked this out. But they reckon that actually they're probably about the same in number. That's, what they ca that's the conclusion they came to. So you each, get, you each get a star as well because both answers are kind of correct and kind of wrong at the same time. So, I don't know how you all did. I'm sure you all did well. I don't think you did as well as these guys, because these guys got every single question right, both teams, which means they get a massive round of applause. And, um, and if you guys want to grab any sweets from there, you can take some and you can, just, you can give them to people sitting around about you. So if you guys come off for a second and go back down, you can keep hold of the stars if you want. You can hand them out. You can, as I say, if you want to, if you want to get any sweets, um, just make sure you check with your parents before you eat them all. Um, <laughs> so... There is one more slide I just want to put up, okay? Because when we think, when we think about the stars, when we think about what we've just learned about the universe, I love this verse in Isaiah chapter 40, and it says, uh, "It says, to whom will you compare me, or who is my equal?" Says the Holy One. Says God. He says, "Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. You can look at the you can look at the ceiling here actually and see all these stars, okay?" And he says, who created all of these, all of these septillion stars, or however many there are? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls forth each of them by name. He knows every single one. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. He's our God who we worship tonight. And as I say, there'll be a special star that's going to come up later in the story. But the God who we worship tonight created every single star in the sky and every grain of sand on earth and numbers them and knows where each one is and calls them forth by name. And, and that is why he's worthy of all our praise. To find it up, Kelly, he's going to pray for us um, just before we, before we sing some carols. Let's pray. God, we just thank you so much, Lord, how you've just reminded us how incredible your power is and your just imagination to create such glory that we can see. I just pray that your hand will be with us now as we come and worship you, Lord, and we praise you. In your name, amen. amen.
you guys. Right, so to continue with our team of the star, we're going to have a little game. So I'm going to call on two people, first of all, to come help. The first person is lovely Roger down the back. Thank you, Raj and Paula. <laughs> so I'm going to have you guys just come up. You can just stand right in the frontier. And now the next thing I need is all the kids to come up. Can I see you guys? There you are. Right. Come, come, come. 
So we're going to split into two teams. And your challenge is you have one minute to dress each of these guys as a star, right? I'm going to give you a bag of things. OK, so we're going to split. We'll try to split a bit evenly. Right, so how do you go over that side? You join that team with Finn. Yeah, let's see. Flo Sweeper, you come this side. Or just, or you both going that side. We go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's great. Um, can I have two of the youth just to come and help? Is that all right? Yeah, lovely. Okay. Thank you, guys. So you have one minute, right? And in your bag, you've got lots of little tinsel. I think there may be some lights in the bags as well. And we're going to be judging on three things. How pretty the star looks how creative it is, and just how shiny and beautiful it is. All right? Do we have a countdown, Jonathan? <gasps> right. Guys, are you ready? We hold, whoa, 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 whoa. I think you guys are getting ahead. Hang on. We haven't started yet. OK, you ready? Steady, go. That was good. Right. Do you, are your lights are on? Wonderful. Paula, do you got lights on? Uh, no, it, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, guys. I know. Round of applause for doing so well. I love it. Okay. Can I hear a big woo ha if you think this team is done? Thank you. Okay. Can I get a big woo ha if you think Roger's team has won? Oh, gosh, I don't know. It's tricky, isn't it? No. <laughs> OK, I'm going to go with Paula. I think Paula's won. Paula's team, well done. <laughs> Thank you, guys. You can get a prize if you want a prize. Both Come teams, because you both all did amazingly. Help yourselves. Fantastic. OK, right, let's take all of these back. We're going to continue uh, in worship, so if you want to stand, we're going to sing our next carol. Dave, we, wouldn't, we would like you to clap to this one, please, because we took a very long time working out how we were going to do it, so if you can clap along, that would be lovely. Ben's already ready. Ben's like clapping already. <laughs>
Amen. Great, if you'd like to take your seats, and um, we're going to do a bit of an interactive reading. So I need everybody's help with this, okay? And, um, and basically, in this reading, we're going to be reading about Herod, okay? So whenever I say Herod, I want people to go, boo, okay? Can everyone just do that for me? Okay, so if I say Herod, you go, boo. Mm. Yeah, wonderful. That's good. And, um, and we're also going to be reading about a star. So whenever I say star, if you're feeling really energetic, you can jump up and do a star jump, okay? Who's going to do that? Oh, wow, we've got the energetic ones. That's wonderful. If you're not feeling energetic, you can just go like, ah, okay? Um, just don't hit the people sitting next to you, okay? If you can avoid that, that'd be great. Um, the other thing, what's the other words in it? We have Bethlehem. So, so when I say Bethlehem, I want you to point in that direction, because that's where Bethlehem is, we're going to imagine. Okay? <laughs> yeah, I changed my mind. I was going to point there, and I realized that's really difficult for you, isn't it? So over there is Bethlehem. Okay, that's good. Um, so what have we got so far? We've got Herod. We've got Star. Yeah. And we've got Bethlehem. Lovely. Excellent. Very good. And, um, and what's the last one? Ah, I know the last one. Every time I say wise men, I want you to go like this. Ooh. That's weird for me. I can't do that. You'll have to do that. Wise men, okay? So just stroke your, stroke your beard, okay, if you, if you have one, and pretend you have a beard if you don't have one. Um, wonderful. So let's, um, let's just practice those one more time. So um, in no particular order, Bethlehem, Herod, <laughs> Star, <laughs> Wise Men. Okay. Very good. So you've got to listen out carefully as we go through. But I think, I think you guys have this. Okay, so this is the story. This is taken from Matthew chapter 2. It says, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, during the time of King Herod, <laughs> wise men from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all of the people's chief priests and the teachers of the law, all these educated people, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the wise men secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard Herod, they, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When the wise men saw the star, it was a very beautiful star, <laughs> a, very, a very shiny star. <laughs> Sorry, I was just, just blowing that. It doesn't say that in Matthew. They were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, the wise men returned to their country by another route. That was brilliant. I think you should all give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> Wonderful. We'll be hearing a little bit more about, um, about this story in just a second. But first, we're, we're going to sing one more carol. So if you want to stand, and we're going to sing Silent Night.
you want to sit down. That one's a nice one just to calm us down after that interactive reading. Some of you are still getting your breath back and your heart pumping from all that jumping, I know. Um, I want us to think a little bit for a moment about kings, okay? And um, there's several kings in the story that we just read. Can anybody just name, shout out one of the kings? Herod, okay, that's good, came from behind me, I think someone who knows the answers here, <laughs> another, another king in the story, Jesus. Jesus, King Jesus, cool, any more kings in the story, yeah, so someone say the wise men, yeah, the wise men, they're kind of kings, I know, I can see why we didn't, we didn't call them kings, we called them wise men, didn't we, in the story, but they were, they were like kings in their own land, that was, that was how they were treated, so they're all quite different, aren't they? Very different kings. So Herod, Herod is a king. Okay? Herod rules over, over Judea, over like Israel at that time, although it was, it was occupied by the Romans. But Herod was, was still kind of put in place as king by the Romans, and he was kind of under their control a bit. And Herod has a palace, which is what we expect a king to have, don't we? Um, actually, he has five palaces. Um, he, he loves his palaces. And his palace is found in Jerusalem, which is the capital city. So where does our king, King Charles, where is King Charles's palace? London. London. And actually, he has a few homes, doesn't he? So people took a while to answer that. But yeah, Buckingham Palace is in London. That's our capital city. And, and Herod's palace, one of his palaces was in Jerusalem. And that's why, you know, the wise men, they came to Jerusalem first because they thought, well, go to the capital because that must be where the king is going to be. But, but the king they were looking for wasn't there. And, um, and when Herod realizes there's another king around, okay, there's another king that has been born. In fact, not just any king. All of these teachers, all of these people around who he calls to him, they tell him, yeah, that, that the Messiah is promised in Scripture. He is going to be a king like no other. In fact, he's going to be kind of like David, one of the greatest kings that there ever was. But he's the one who's going to change everything. He's the one who's going to save us. He's the one who's going to set up his, his kingdom that will have no end. And, and so he finds out about this king. Does this, this king sounds pretty good, doesn't he? Yeah, this, this king who's going to come sounds pretty good. But, but what did Herod do? Herod actually, he said to the wise men, he said, oh, well, actually, find where this king is because I want to worship him. But he didn't really want to worship him. He wanted to kill him. He, he, was, he was worried about the competition. He, 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 didn't want, he didn't want this new king to come and take his throne away and his power and his kingdom. Actually, you know, Jesus wasn't interested in the slightest in Herod's throne and, and Herod's palaces and all the rest of it. But Herod didn't get that. Um, you know, and, and that's what Herod was like. He was only interested in himself. He couldn't worship Jesus. He was only interested in what he wanted. So that's one king, King Herod. What do we think about King Herod? Boo. Boo. We don't like King Herod, do we? He's not a good king. So let's, let's, look, at some, let's look at a better example. We have the wise men, okay? And, and they would, as I say, they, they, sometimes we call them kings, we say three kings. We don't actually know quite how many there were. It's just kind of plural. But um, there are three gifts. So I guess you can see why we end up with thinking about three kings. And, um, and they were very rich. And they were very powerful. So a bit like Herod. And they were very important people. And they lived a long, a long way away from Israel. They lived right out to the east um, of Israel in a foreign land, which was called Persia. And, you know, today it's, um, it's called Iran. It's sort of one, of, one, of the, one of the countries we managed to beat in the World Cup, but that's another story. Um, and, and they see a star, these wise men, they see a star that is like no other star they'd ever seen. And these were very clever people. And they studied the stars and they looked up at them and they, and they plotted them. We have the stars going across the sky, you can see here. But then they see a star and they're like, wow, we've never seen a star like that before. And so they think, you know, we're going to follow that star. Uh, this star must, in fact, be a sign that a new king is going to be born. 
And the wise men don't think to themselves, oh, maybe this king is going to be in competition with us. No, they think we need to find this new king. And we need to come and honor this new king. And we need to bring him gifts. And we need to worship this new king. So they travel. And they set off. And they travel around a thousand miles. Okay, has anybody here ever traveled a thousand miles before? Anyone ever traveled longer than? We, we, can, we normally get in planes, don't we, when we want to travel a thousand miles? Maybe a train. Some of you might have driven a thousand miles. You certainly haven't made that journey on a camel, I'm guessing. No, no camel, no camel riders here. So, but they would have had many, many, many camels. I mean, loads of camels, hundreds of camels perhaps, and lots of possessions and, and servants and many people um, traveling with them. And they come to Jerusalem where they expect the king of the Jews is going to be born, the important city. But then they're told, no, God's word says that, that this king of the Jews, this Messiah, is going to be born in Bethlehem. And Bethlehem is just a little town, a little kind of town of shepherds near Jerusalem. It's not that important. But they go there and the star leads them right to the house where Mary and Joseph and Jesus are. And these incredibly, this is, this is the amazing moment. These incredibly rich and powerful and, and important and educated people, they see Jesus, they see this small child, and they bow down and they worship him. You know, can you imagine that? You know, you know, seeing a small child would be like seeing Malachi here, just walking up the aisle, and me coming down and saying, Malachi, I'm going to worship you. It would be very strange, wouldn't it? But, but actually, they recognized that Jesus was was so, so important and so special and so worthy of honor. And they give him gifts. They give him gold and frankincense and myrrh. These things are incredibly expensive. But, you know, they, they, I suppose they were given joint Christmas and birthday presents at once. So it's okay. We can kind of, you know, we understand why. But they give gifts fit for a king. But you see, the real king in this story isn't, isn't Herod and, and it isn't the wise men. The, you know, it isn't Herod with his five palaces. It isn't the wise men with their camels and their possessions and their gold and everything else. It's this small child, Jesus, the one who was born in a stable among animals in a, a small little town um, and part of an ordinary family. But this is the way that God chose to come into this world and reveal himself. And, 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 and so this little child is actually the king of the whole universe. He is king over everything. He is the king of kings. And so any kings that really uh, know what they're doing are going to bow down before this king. You know, he is the one who's come to save the whole world and rescue us from darkness and shine his light that's brighter than any, all of the stars in the sky. All of the hundreds of billions of billions of billions of billions of stars put together together. And, and Jesus, Jesus' light is brighter than the whole lot of it because he made them all. He knows them all. He, he knows them, each one of them, by name. And, and this king came actually in order to give his life for us and to die on the cross and, 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 and to take our sin upon himself and then to rise again to new life. And he invites us, all of us, to worship him. He invites all of us to just come and to bow down before him, to lay everything else down, but to receive something far more precious than all of the palaces and the camels and the gold and everything in this world, to receive new life and forgiveness and a relationship with God and, uh, and, and to be set free from anything that had ever held us back. And, you know, this wonderful invitation, you know, it's something that Herod refused it. Herod wanted to resist it with everything he possibly could. But, but, but wise people, like the wise men, they come and they bow down and they recognize how incredible this invitation is. I wonder about you. I wonder about you here today. You know, have, you, have you received this invitation? Uh, do you welcome that? Do you come before Jesus and, and just give him your all? I'm going to pray for us. I want to pray for us today that the presence of Jesus and the hope and the life that he brings will touch our hearts this Christmas. And in fact, right now, um, so maybe you just want to bow your heads and close your eyes for a moment. Don't fall asleep. It's okay. And we're just going to, we're just going to, um, just going to pray a blessing over you. Yeah, Father, we want to thank you for sending Jesus into this world who is a king like no other. 
Uh, there is no rival to King Jesus. Uh, he is above every, um, every throne. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And, um, and, and God, we thank you. You chose to reveal yourself to us in this way and invite us into a relationship with you. And God, I pray that you would bless every person in this room to know something of your presence, of your life, of your hope, and of your joy, and of your love, and that it would overflow and touch um, all of those who they meet this Christmas. Uh, Father God, may we, may we accept this invitation to know you and to worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I think we're going uh, to sing our final carol heart the herald if you'd like yeah if you'd like to stand and let's uh, let's sing together
Wonderful. We want to thank you all so much for coming uh, this afternoon. Yeah, it's so great to have you all here. Like we said, we do have another carol service that's starting again tonight at 6.30. Yep. So for those of you who want to join in online, you'll be able to join or you can come back then at half six too. Yeah, wonderful. And also uh, next Sunday, the 18th in the morning, we're going to have a very special fancy dress, Chris Dingle. Um, you're going to have to come on and find out what that is all about. But you can dress up as like one of the shepherds, characters, shepherds, yeah. wise men, wise or, or any, anything really. Anything. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Elsa, I'm getting suggestions of Elsa, donkeys, all sorts <laughs> of things. We can we can work them all in. Uh, so yeah. please do come and join us at 10:30 next Sunday morning if you want to do that. That's and please great. join us for refreshments as well. For yeah, there's lovely mulled wine still in the back. And mince pies. Just to mention, there is a lot of snow outside. Roger is just giving me a little heads up. So um, I'm sure Roger will help us all get out of the car park safely. Brilliant. All right. Thank, thank you. you, guys. Okay.